In our study today, I want us to think about Thanksgiving. It's coming up here in just a few days, and it's one of my favorite holidays because, first of all, you get to eat. Uh, secondly, you get to see all your friends. And thirdly, you get to watch the Dallas Cowboys lose, usually, but you get to watch the Dallas Cowboys. And so all these three beautiful things are together for Thanksgiving. But many times, as we're gathered around a table, we all do so in a different way. Every one of our families has a different tradition. Every one of our families has different memories. Every one of our families has different tastes in the things that we like. Many years ago, we were in elementary school. And as I was in elementary school, I remember sitting in a class and the teacher was going down saying, Pilgrim Indian, Pilgrim Indian, Pilgrim Indian. And I remember praying to God that I could be an Indian. And the reason for that was we each got a piece of construction paper and Indians got to make a little feather to put in your hair. You're not allowed to do that today. And the uh, pilgrims were, had to make a whole hat to put on. And I just thought, with my artistic abilities, I'm much better off with a feather. But we would dress up and we would reenact the Thanksgiving dinner where the Indians and the pilgrims from back in the 1600s would gather together and take care of one another and show love to one another. And we had turkey and we had uh, the stuffing and we had cranberries the way God intended in the shape of a can. You remember that? Nowadays, people like real cranberries. The can-shaped cranberries are much better. And we'd gather together, and we would eat our Thanksgiving dinner, and we would talk about what the meaning of Thanksgiving truly is. Now that we have gotten a little bit older, I would say, we, we've studied through, and we've realized they didn't even eat turkey at the very, thanks, very, very first Thanksgiving at what we look at. As a matter of fact, it was probably some form of fish, maybe some venison, and most likely some form of corn or lentils. It'd be totally different than what our meal looked like. Beyond that, there's much debate whether the Indians were ever even invited to come. And beyond that is the question of, did they really have the feast in a way that we talk about being on a single day in which we have today? And as we study Thanksgiving, we realize really it didn't become a national holiday until right at the end of the Civil War or maybe pretty soon after that, which would be 200 years at least after what we usually look, look at when we look back to this time. And so the question is, as you and I look at what our culture says about Thanksgiving, what is it that we say in our culture about it by the way we practice it? And really, what does Thanksgiving mean to people today? And even more so, what does Thanksgiving mean to us as Christians? As we look in our Bible, we see a feast that's somewhat similar to Thanksgiving. And it's a feast of booths. It's a feast of Sukkot. It's a feast of, as we like to call it, tabernacles. And as you read there in Deuteronomy 16, which was just read a few minutes ago, and as you read in the book of Leviticus, we see it's a very interesting time in which Israel would gather together. There were three feasts in which the people were called to, every male was supposed to go to where the Ark of the Covenant was, and they would gather together as a nation. But for the week before that, they were to gather together in booths, or as we might say, tents. And as they gathered together in the tents, they would eat the food which people ate back when they were in their wilderness. And the point of the festival, the point of the holiday, is to look back and remember how God blessed his nation. Remember how God provided for his nation. It was to be an object lesson that the first six days as a family gathered together, they would sit around a table as they ate, and they would talk about how God had always blessed them and everything that they had. And on the seventh day, as the entire nation would gather together, they would remember that they were the nation of God. They would gather around where the Ark of the Covenant was, whether it be Gilgal, whether it be Shiloh, later it would be Jerusalem. And during that time, they would see what we would call an idea of thanksgiving. 
Now, this date and this feast don't exactly work together. It came at the very end of the harvest season. So this year, it would have started about October 9th, somewhere in that range. Excuse me, October 19th is when it would have been this year. But it came during the fall of the year during that time, and it was a time for people to gather. Now, many important national things would happen. Uh, some people say this is a time in which David brought the ark to Jerusalem. We know for certain this is a time when Solomon inaugurated the temple. And we know for certain that this is a time, the day of Pentecost, when the church would be established. And so a lot of big things would happen at this Thanksgiving episode, which would come together. All these dates are very similar as they come together. I want us to think about this Feast of Tabernacles and relate it to Thanksgiving dinner so that you and I as members of the Lord's Church can think about what we should be doing this Thursday. As we gather together and as you eat your turkey or your ham or your fish, as you eat the five or six or seven or eight slices of pie, when you're thinking about what the Bible says about gluttony, go a little further and think about what God tells you and I today as Christians to think about Thanksgiving. First and foremost, as you and I gather together, we see that Thanksgiving articulates our past. It helps us to remember where we have come from. In Leviticus 23, 40 through 42, you see the building of the tents and you see the leafy branches which would come across and you would see how these people lived not with a homeland, not with a culture that they had right there, but they were going through the wilderness to build their culture, to build who they would be, trusting in the Lord. And as the Israelites would think about the past, they would remember their time that they were slaves in Egypt. You and I, likewise, as we gather together and we think about Thanksgiving, should remember where God has brought us from. You once were in darkness, but now you have been transported to eternal light. We read in John 13, verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in him should not perish. We need to quote verse 17 as well. For Jesus did not come to this world to condemn it, but he came to this world that he might save it. We once were sinners, but now we have been made children of God. As we articulate and think about the past, we remember the time in which we spend in the wilderness. Now, each and every one of us has a different definition of the wilderness in our family. There may be times in which you have undergone grief, because of the passing of a loved one. There may be times in which, as you look back at your life, you remember times where you were having difficulty with a career. You were having difficulty in a relationship. You were having difficulty in determining what direction God wants you to send your life. But as you stay faithful to God, God keeps you through that time of wilderness. God will guide you as he fed manna to the uh, Israelites, as he guided the Israelites by the cloud of smoke and the cloud of fire, in the same way he guides us in the things in which we endure. In Matthew 28, verse 20, Jesus makes a promise that he will be with us even to the end of the age. In Hebrews chapter 13, we see the promise where God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. And so the Hebrew writer says, what then shall I fear? What can people, what can mankind do to me if God is with me? We articulate our past as we think about our journey to the promised land. And we see that God promises us that one day we shall be in the promised land if we remain faithful. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10, the end of that verse, be faithful even unto the point of death and he will give you a crown of righteousness. So in the season of Thanksgiving, as we gather around a table, as we gather around as a family, as we see people who maybe live afar off or see people who we don't see quite as often, this is an opportunity to look at our past, to see who we are and how we have been shaped by what we have gone through. 
how the world has shaped us and how the Lord has shaped us into things in which we've done. But going further, we see not only does it articulate our past, but it also is an opportunity to appreciate the present. We don't know what tomorrow may hold. And if the Lord wills that there's a Thanksgiving next year, there may be an empty chair, which is filled this year, but it's empty the next year. We need to appreciate what God has given us while he has given it to us. Once again, each Jewish male gathered three times a year to go to Jerusalem. as during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the Feast of Weeks, and also the Feast of Tabernacles. But what you see here is the joy of fellowship. Imagine what Jerusalem or Shiloh, depending on the time of the nation of Israel that we're looking at, what it would feel like in that city. Jerusalem was not necessarily the largest city in the world at that time, not even close. But imagine what it would feel like when all those people were there. Imagine it as Tater Day on steroids. But more so, imagine it if Tater Day was filled with Marshall County people instead of everyone else. And you would see Friends from times past. You would see relatives from times past. You would see opportunities of remembering and enjoying people you haven't seen in forever. The Lord has given us life to enjoy. And the Lord has given you and I people and relationships to enjoy. Let's take advantage of those blessings which we've had. The classic classic Thanksgiving passage is found in the book of Luke. Jesus is traveling to Jericho, and as he goes, there are many lepers who appear to him and beg that they may be healed. Jesus tells them to go to the priest, that they may be cleansed, and so they go, but one who is a Samaritan returns, and he comes back. And when he comes back, he takes a moment to tell the master, thank you. Jesus says, where are the nine? And why is the one who appreciates what's been done a Gentile rather than a Jewish child of God? What do you think the Lord thinks about us today? When the Lord hears our prayers, when the Lord sees our life, how thankful are we to the things that God has given to us? Not many of us suffer from food insecurity. Not many of us suffer from knowing how this, as far as a national idea of safety, how things are going to go. When you rate us against everyone else in the world, we are so very blessed. But when you rate us against the people who lived 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 500 years ago, imagine the blessings which we have. Compare their lives to our lives. When's the last time that you told God, thank you? When's the last time that you spent time telling God how much you appreciate the situation God has placed you in? We gather around this table on Thursday. And as we have this week of Thanksgiving, be sure that you appreciate the presence And tell God, thank you for the things in which he has done. Thank the Lord for your life. Each family has different traditions. Some of those traditions may seem strange. Some of those traditions may be different than what anybody else has. You may already have your Christmas tree up and Elf on the Shelf may be doing all sorts of crazy stuff at your house right now. Other people don't want to have the Christmas tree up until right after Thanksgiving. And other people want to wait till a week or two before Christmas. But whatever your traditions are, make sure you use those traditions to share an opportunity of joy and love with the family. Create traditions which let people know where they've come from, which let people know how important they are, which let people have a story to share. In life, appreciate the present. 
Thirdly, we see that it anticipates the future. There's a day coming when those empty seats will be filled. We all have favorite verses. One of my more favorite verses in the last few years is found over in Revelation chapter 19 and verse 9. And while much of it is apocalyptic and speaking of different things, you read in that passage where there's coming a time when everything is vindicated and the world has been taken care of, there will be a banquet table. I love how the Lord focuses on fellowship meals as much as the church does. Over and over and over, you read about fellowship dinners, the banquet table, which is here. And as you read there in Revelation chapter 19 and verse 9, you see where the Lord is there. And he's calling everybody together. And every table or every chair is filled, which is there. And we think about our grandparents. We think about our parents. We think about those who have gone on before. We think about friends and loved ones. And how finally, finally, When sickness and death and all those things have passed away, there shall truly be a time when we are together. As Thanksgiving goes by, sometimes our children grow up. And so they're not able to come home necessarily on Thanksgiving. Maybe they have to go to the spouse's parents for that holiday. Sometimes at Thanksgiving, there's family problems. And so because of that stress and strife, we're not able to get together the way that we want to because of things which have happened. Sometimes death has stepped in a way. And because of that, we miss them on these special holidays. When you gather together Thursday, anticipate the future. And realize that the Lord is going to make things right. That there will be a future when we are all together at that banquet table. And everything will make sense. And everything will be good. And everything will be righteous. On that day, all people who follow the Lord will be vindicated. On that day, all things will be righteous and will be good. But until that day comes, we have these feasts, and we have these celebrations, and we have these traditions to remind us not only of our past, but to help us to appreciate the future and remember exactly where it is we are right now.